Yes, so welcome to Live with Search Engine Land. Today, um, we are going to be talking about the gender gap in SEO. And this obviously is not a new problem, um, but it is pernicious and affects the long term financial health and career advancement of women in the industry, hurting them. And I think what we often don't think about is it by extension, hurts their families, their communities, um, and the industry as a whole. So we uh, hope discussions like this, the research that we're going to be discussing today, um, and some of the solutions we're going to be putting forward will help foster proactive, intentional action um, from both men and women in the industry that can help shift the imbalance of female representation and pay equity in the industry. I um, it did an earlier episode of Live with Search Engine Land on, um, on gender diversity, I'm sorry, in um, on racial and ethnic diversity in agencies and in-house teams. Um, and how they can provide um, and foster um, diversity and inclusion from recruitment through advancement. And so I know one of the key takeaways for me in that those discussions was the critical importance of both intentionality and accountability in affecting and maintaining change in organizations. Um, and we're going to be talking about that more today, as well as ways to support independent consultants, because there are certainly um, a wide number of um, international SEO consultants around the world, as we all know. Um, so I am thrilled today to have three fabulously talented marketers with us. Um, Nicole DeLeon is, um, I'm going to introduce her first because it's her research that really brought the need for this discussion to light. Um, and Nicole is founder and lead strategist of North Star Inbound, which is an agency that specializes in SEO, content marketing, and link building. And Amanda Jordan is the director of local search at Locomotive, which is an agency um, specializing in enterprise technical SEO in North Carolina. And Amanda is joining us here today from um, South Carolina. And um, then we have Aleda Solis, is an international SEO consultant and founder of Orianti. She joins us from Spain. And so thank you for sharing your Friday evening with us. Um, I would, yes, I would love to go around um, and have you each share a little bit about you, your role, your background, your passions. Um, and so Amanda, why don't we start with you? Sure. So I have been involved in the SEO industry in some way since 2012. Um, I eventually got really into legal local SEO, and that's what was kind of got me into the local SEO space in general. Um, and I'm currently the director of local search at Locomotive Agency. And um, I have worked in a lot of places that were very mill oriented. I mean, all of them have been. Um, until now, where I'm working at an agency where it's predominantly female. So um, there's a huge difference that I've noticed in company culture when there are so many more women, when we kind of, when it's kind of equaled out. And I really appreciate the dynamics that I see here. And it's not as toxic as what I've experienced in a lot of agencies that were predominantly male and predominantly um, madmen-like. <laughs> agencies where they're focused on making money and ethics were thrown out the window. So. Great. Interesting. And did you choose a um, female majority agency on purpose in your next, in this, this decision or did it happen happily? It happened to be um, what I was looking for was someplace with, um, that focused on being ethical, um, that focused on the way that they treated their employees. And it so happened to also have a lot of women working there. So that was just uh, interesting. That may be a sign that there is something there 
where in, when there's an ethical company, there may be just more women there in general. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Um, and Aleda, can you tell us a little bit yes. about yourself? Yes, indeed. Well, I, I am an international SEO and started uh, my career in SEO in 2007 in Spain. And it is funny that now that you're sharing a little bit about your, your journey, Amanda, you made me remember how, for example, in my first job as an SEO in an online marketing agency here in Salamanca, uh, I was the only female, I was the only woman yeah. uh, at the department, literally. Uh, the other Per, uh, women in like in the agency pretty much like in an active role with clients was a salesperson right and I remember myself when starting right like feeling very disconnected with the other team members because of course these were like typical guys going for drinks after after mm -hmm. uh, work and of course I was a female and somehow they didn't invited me right but so I, I at that point it's interesting because I was just starting my career I was relatively young, right? Right. Still, I couldn't point out what was it, right? Uh, but I have to say also that I have been also um, quite um, lucky to have had in the past good uh, bosses who have given me the opportunity to grow um, with good pays in, in, in payments in the past. However, I also believe that if I hadn't become an independent consultant uh, with my own shop, right? I wouldn't necessarily be having like the visibility that I have or earn as well as I do, for example. And then on the other hand, something that I will be more than happy to comment later on is what I see in other, in, in other regions, right? I definitely see in the US and in the UK, a lot of great efforts and uh, statistics and willing to, to, to talk about this far more openly, right? Mm -hmm. Still in Spain, and this is Europe, I mean, it's not Latin American, but me as an original, like, uh, native Latin American person is even worse, I can say. Uh, whenever we discuss these issues, is we see still the typical reactions from men saying, but is this really necessary? Do you really feel that you don't have the same type of equality and then mm -hmm. this type of conversation? So we still here are a few years, you know, behind. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in the terms of this conversation, right? So thank you very much for, for giving uh, the opportunity to talk more about it. I think it's very well needed still today and much more. Great. Um, and Nicole, that brings us to you. And um, if you tell us a little bit about yourself and then I'd love to have you talk about some of the research that you have published. And I'm gonna put links to that um, in the chat now for everyone to, to be able sure. to access that. So um, thank you very much for, for having me and for putting this together. This is, this is really very exciting. Um, so I, um, I, I started my career in SEO as a startup founder, uh, creating a marketplace. And so I needed to learn marketplace SEO. Um, and so I didn't begin my career in SEO really working directly in another agency. So my experience with sort of gender bias in SEO is sort of rooted also in my experience in gender bias in the startup world. So they're sort of connected. Um, so I had wonderful mentors in the SEO space who were male. So if it weren't for the male SEOs in my life, I wouldn't have an agency, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I'm eternally grateful um, for them. But at the same time, um, I was trying to fundraise for my startup. And, you know, there were all these, you know, male investors that I was pitching to. And even the ones that really, they were like, oh, I love you. I love this. This is a great idea. I think you're totally going to carry this forward. But I, I, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to finish your round because you're a woman and people have prejudices around investing in women. And it didn't matter how much I sort of pled my case that like, well, you need to be the, the difference that you want to see in the world, right? If you don't do it for a fear of what others are going to do, we won't ever get anywhere, right? Um, so uh, I guess that's that's sort of my background and in in dealing with some of these issues personally, but also in creating North Star Inbound, 
Um, I, you know, I was at the same time that I was creating an agency, we were having our babies. Um, and I started, the agency started attracting all these women. And so we'll talk about this a little bit later. It's not that women um, don't, the women that, for, that form North Star Inbound or that lead North Star Inbound are incredibly hardworking women. Um, but it's almost like only other women really understand. And like, I don't fuss and we don't fuss at each other. Like, just get your work done. It doesn't matter when you do it. If you have to take a kid to the dentist, like go do it, it's not a big deal. And those are the sorts of benefits in, in, in a way, the unspoken benefits that other women get when they get to work in workplaces that are led or where their bosses are, are, are other women that I wish um, they got from working with other men. Like we need to get our men to the same place. Uh, that's a really good point. I mean, I do, and I also, I that, it's such a good reminder that this is a conversation for men and women. Um, and if the men aren't listening, hearing, um, asking questions and figuring out this as, as a group, then we can't all move forward together. Um, so why don't we, on that note, Nicole, um, if you want to talk about the research that you and your team have published recently and some of the kind of the findings and um, the stats are really interesting. The, um, the quotes from the interviews um, you got and some of the, you know, some of the sort of anecdotes in there we can talk about as well, sort of the okay. sentiments. So, um, but why don't we start with, you know, what you did um, and uh, and what you found. Yeah, so we it's important to realize that this was part of a broader survey um, on the state of SEO. So we were trying to survey the industry broadly on a variety of issues. Um, and, and one of them uh, what were these gender issues that we sort of then were able to mine out. And the reason that that's important is because for instance, right now we have a survey that's specifically trying to dig into diversity and inclusion issues within the industry. And it's attracting a amazing number of people from diverse backgrounds, which is great, but it, 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 it's starting to be clear that, this, um, that the survey is not gonna be representative of the SEO community at large. That's fine, it's a different survey. So for this one, we thought it would be significant to be able to report the number of women SEOs that, that are out there and try to get that to be as representative as possible. Um, so it was a state of SEO survey with some questions embedded. Uh, 652 people responded. Uh, we marketed the survey on Twitter, LinkedIn, our own database, and we also paid for a database and sent out emails to people who had uh, SEO in their, in their title. Um, and uh, what we found was that the gender gap is persistent. Um, so we found that 68, 68.4% of uh, SEOs identify as male versus 29.3 identifying as female. So that's also consistent with three previous MOS studies and the gap hasn't narrowed since 2015. So it's almost like we've we're making progress and then we kind of hit a little bit of a, of a wall. Um, it's most pronounced, and I think Aleda is gonna be able to speak to this. Um, it's most pronounced in Central and South America. I, I did not know Aleda that you were originally um, not from Spain. Uh, so in, in Central and South America, 83.3% uh, are male versus 16.7% uh, female. And Canada is the only country that's really doing well compared to every other country um, with 52.6% uh, being male and 47% uh, being female. So that's, that's pretty good when you compare that to everyone else. Um, women are also much more likely to be freelancers than men. Uh, so 17, almost 18% of the women who responded uh, reported that they freelance versus only about 11% who, who reported that they were male identifying. Um, and they're also, women are also much more likely to specialize in content versus 
uh, being in, in technical roles. So women are twice as likely to report that they're content specialists and men are twice as likely to report that they are uh, technical specialists. And then finally, women tend to earn less. So male identifying SEOs have retainers that are 28.6% higher, have project prices that are 66.7% higher, and hourly rates that are 16.8% higher. Um, so at least from the study that we ran or the data that we were able to mine from our state of SEO survey, um, we've, got, we've got some decent work that we, we need to do. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm really interested in what um, Elena and Amanda, what your reactions are to that data. Are you surprised? Uh, yeah, no, they both are. <laughs> Sadly, no. Yeah. Sadly, no. Uh, so, yeah, well, if if it is okay, I can comment yeah. a little bit. So, two things, right? So, something also important to point out, Nicole. I think that you also ask in the survey regarding the positions, right? The, the seniority of, of the positions. Yeah. And yeah. it showed that there were more, more men at the upper levels in the, of yeah. the organization, right? So thinking like this or, or by analyzing it, I mean, it is even logical, right? If there are more men who are directors or mm -hmm. a very high prominent levels in agencies, in-house, whatever, of course they are going to make more mo money than the women who are below, right? I, I think that well, trying to analyze one of the hypotheses is that we need to give it five more years or X more years until these women who just started in SEO, not necessarily that long ago, enter to that level, reach that level to get a, a payment that is a little bit more equal. However, we know that in general, right? There are many studies about this, how men in the same positions that women end up uh, making more, how they they are also less afraid to request even more in interviews and to be a little bit more ambitious in, 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 in that sense, right? Uh, so there might be my, many hypotheses, many influences of this, but it is a reality and it is aligned to what I have seen, what I have also gone through in the past when I was an employee and I had a good relationship with former colleagues and we ended up realizing that, surprise, surprise, a male colleague who were not necessarily senior than me or whatever made more than me, for example. So th these are things that in general, if we dig a little bit more, we, we will find out and we will see that it is it is like this. Um, but then also at the same time, um, what it is important and how to fix it, right? I, I really do believe that uh, this is up to two things. On one hand, uh, decision makers, uh, business owners who, who are hiring, that they have rules that incentivize that the payment will be fair, that will be equal, that won't depend on gender and will eliminate any factors um, that can end up um, generating bias, right? So uh, earlier today, I saw an advert uh, of, of, a, of a development position at Search Pilot, I think, and, and they specifically requested that in their application process they wouldn't ask about the gender and please don't like try to anonymize a little bit the data regarding the gen mm -hmm. gender of the person because they I, I guess that yeah they are taking this seriously and they want to 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 test out all those other ways to eliminate that bias and uh, then on the other hand I think that it also has to be with how the our our own um the, the way that women we feel we feel sh like secure enough and sure mm -hmm. enough and, and our confidence to request for more. And I need here to highlight uh, what Arish is doing in the Women in Tech SEO group and community. I think that having now communities indeed like, like mm -hmm. Arish uh, that provides a place for women to grow, to, to have other sources of validation information about uh, salary ranges, for example, th that has a mentorship program that with coaches helping you to understand, to feel more like, like uh, to give you confidence to next time that you are going uh, through an interview process to request for more, to ask for more, to know how to ask. Uh, so all of this is super important um, to, to not only trying to tackle the, the issue, only saying, oh, you know, uh, 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 let's blame this air people or segment of people, but this is how we can all align together to solve it because yeah, it, this is what is important. We we need allies, we need the men too, in order to improve all of this. Yeah, 
I, 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 I think you're so right on that. And I do think that um, whether you are uh, anonymizing job um, applications or really looking within your organizations and and quantifying what that imbalance looks like, um, both from a representation and a pay um, standpoint, and whether that is you decide to become more transparent internally about pay structures, um, or within your leadership team, really just say, let's look across the board and how are we actually treating the mm -hmm. men and women on this on these teams and, and think about, so seniority is a piece of that, I think, Aleda, but also that speaks to advancement tracks mm -hmm. um, that, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and what happens when women are having children in your company? What does that do to their investment track? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and then really looking closely at what's the actual productivity? What is the client satisfaction? What is the you know business bottom line result from the work that um, that these women are doing in your organization? Um, and then putting a price to it. So there's the how to negotiate your own price. And then there's the, you know, the business doing the right thing um, to keep women both working and advancing in those organizations. Mm -hmm. um, Amanda, I'd love to hear your your thoughts on, um, yeah. on the research, um, and your own in anecdote. In my experience, in general, I have started mentoring the women in digital marketing who are trying to get raises at their jobs so pretty much i could join a slack group and any woman who asks me i'll say i'll be more than happy to give you some insight <laughs> on what position you're in and what you can likely ask for and for the most part it's just a confidence thing caused by the gender gap um when you see less of yourself represented in the industry you start to devalue yourself and your skills because no one else is like you. Like there must be something wrong or something that you don't understand that's keeping people like you back. Um, and I think that's part of the problem. I've talked to lots of talented people where I'm like, oh, just ask for what you want, they will give it to you. And they just needed someone to say that. Like they didn't understand yeah. that. It like, oh, well, that would have been okay. Like, yeah, you're just asking for five thousand dollars more a year. That's fine. Don't even, don't even consider that asking. Like, you're asking for too much. No, you're not. Um, I've helped my sister plenty of times too, who also works and she's a content manager. So she's uh, kind of in the same spot, and I've helped her several times, just kind of to give people that confidence that they can do it and that they're worth it and they have value. And a lot of times they start to question how much they're getting paid after they hear about what someone else makes. And a lot of times that's a male coworker and you're like, huh, I definitely provide more value than you. Why are you making the same amount? Or why are you making more money than me? And just having the confidence in your ability and to know that your, your value so that you can say, I noticed this and this isn't right. You need to fix it to your uh, managers because they do have they a have ability to take care of their employees if they want to keep them. Um, yeah. One of the things I like to do when it comes to any questions about money and work, I honestly go and ask a white guy, like, <laughs> if you were in my position, what do you ask? What would you ask for? Because that's my husband um, does similar work, not the same thing, but I'll ask him, like, what do you think about this? I'll ask my male mentors, what would you do in this situation? How much would you charge? And I mean, they're going to be on my side so i know they're going to give me a good opinion and they're going to think about what they would do in that situation so i'm automatically thinking more like how they would think with their confidence level than with mine because we automatically start devaluing ourselves because we don't see ourselves that much I, that's such a good point that we don't see ourselves and devalue ourselves yeah Alita, you i think that that in particular thank you very much i uh, i think that that deserves its own area here of topic mm -hmm. not feel, feeling ref, ref, yourself reflected right there so thinking i am not able to speak on a big stage or make that much money or have this very cool position because you, you don't see yourself there right is it possible for someone like me to be there and it, it is something very interesting because uh for example uh for even organizers now this is 
also uh, um, getting more more visibility um, to have a balance in in, in events. Uh, but I can also definitely see how can easy can it can go out of hands if you're the organizer and you're not on top of things and actually make an effort to make it very well balanced because uh, um, an anecdote, right? I, I organized this Scrolling Mondays sessions in which I talk about certain topics and I always tend to ask a couple of people who I uh, are knowledgeable ab about the topic, right? And I remember well, like all the requests that I got when I started this series were from men getting in touch with me saying, hey, Aleda, whenever you speak about this, let me know. I would love to participate. All men. Then, whenever sometimes I invite a guy, a man to to a curly Mondays, it's very typical also that they say, "Oh, you know who else will be very cool to have this session with? This and that, and these are are also men. So men recommend men, right? So if you are organizing an event, it can and, and you start with a couple or, or, or three speakers who are men." It can like very easily generate that an only men event because men will refer men and blah blah blah, and that is why it's so important to on one hand that men are very aware of this challenge, so they they keep this in, into consideration, and then of course the organizers, myself, uh, with even my little webinars, whatever, like I make the effort. It's like I am a woman and I have I need to have another woman and to have a balance, other uh, 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 different races, etc. Right? It's important because indeed, if the person who are just starting or don't know if to request a race, or also they want to become a freelancer or they want to establish themselves, it's like this perception of being on stages or, or guest guest posting, also in big uh, publication, etc. This all will serve you to 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 show your work much more much right more. as as a yeah. as a marketer right as as a personal branding etc so it's important too it's important and i think yeah i'm going to one sec nicole though. so i think what you're talking about aleda is the intentionality um and so you know we organize the smx conferences and this has had to be a very intentional focus to um to increase the number of women that are speaking and uh, you know five six years ago all the pitches not all the pitches but the majority of pitches were from men and so for you to go out to to find women to speak was you know you had to go out and find women to speak um and they're you know reaching out to your network and to get that was really challenging now i have to say like that has become so much easier um not 100 percent. there's still work to do there's still work to do in getting new women to feel confident to um you know they're earlier in their careers to feel confident and that's where agencies can do such an amazing job to help um sponsor those newer um workers um onto the stage and to, to pitch and help them formulate their pitches um you know but this year has really taught us we've done you know put a lot of work into improving the number of women on our stages at the detriment of focusing on ethnic and racial diversity in our stages and so that has been such a you know it's it's frustrating to even say it, but that has been a big wake up call for us. Um, and I think for the industry as a whole, um, but it is that again is going to take real intention in um, expanding networks. And I cannot thank Arij enough for the women in tech SEO um, list. It's fantastic. And so, you know, those kinds of resources are really going to be critical for the industry as a whole to be able to um, achieve better representation and, and diversity of voices um, on stage and off. So um, yeah, Nicole. So I, I want to just push back a little bit on a couple of, of ideas that we've been discussing because sort of the, the narrative a little bit that's emerging is of um, you know, women having to sort of lean in a little bit more, so to speak. And while I don't disagree with that in general, um, I do think that there is an onus on women to lean in in a culture frequently that doesn't welcome that leaning in at all, right? Um, and so you have to do twice the work of, you have to lean in twice as hard 
Um, and so in the face of that environment, many women just say, you know what, I just, just whatever. Like I tried, it didn't work. Why am I gonna put myself out there again? over and over and over again it's you know it's 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 too much i'm just gonna settle right um and i don't think very you know it, it's it's possible that um you know men some men out there may not understand that that's that that's the case right it's not because there's something intrinsic in women that's sort of you know um i mean i'm <laughs> I'm a very out there kind of woman. And I mean, I applied to speak at several conferences a couple years back and got, you know, denied. And when you get denied by conferences, as you all well know, nobody tells you why, right? Nobody says anything as to the why. Um, and so, you know, and I, did, and I didn't know or, or there was no uh, women in tech SEO sort of big robust group to lean on, right? And so I was just like, you know what? This, this took me way, way, way away from client work um, it was supposed to be an investment that paid off and it wasn't because I, I, I you know what, I'm, I need to grow my business by being in front of my clients. And so I kind of put it on the back burner, like why, why bother sort of thing, right? So it wasn't, sometimes it's not for lack of trying. Um, sometimes you try and it doesn't work out because the environment isn't favorable. Um, and maybe it wasn't favorable because I was a woman and maybe it was probably not also favorable because people didn't really know me very well. But it, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, it's multifactorial, right? Um, and then the other idea that I kind of want to introduce is this idea that um, we have a lot, I, I think, I feel, we have a lot of wonderful male allies out there who are really wondering, how can I be the best ally I can be? And, and there's sort of this either quiet or verbal sometimes conversation about, what does it mean to be an ally, right? Um, and personally, I don't think that being an ally means when these issues are being spoken about, I don't speak. Um, it's okay, I think, in my opinion, it's okay if you're, if you're a man to speak about these issues. Um, and, if, and if you are a man and you're noticing that um, you know, the speakers are male or in the webinar, you're saying, Aleda, you were saying, you know, oh, I know who else to bring in, whatever. If you are man or woman, if you are a speaker at an event um, and you notice that the, that the track is leaning in heavily in one direction, it's not diverse, it doesn't have people of color, tell people, I'm not going to go, I'm going to cancel. Like, you know, so that's the accountability. That's like really, really being an ally, like really putting yourself in the shoes of the people who are not there at the table. Like if you want to be an ally, you have to be at the table on behalf of people who aren't, can't, have been excluded, usually unintentionally. But these kinds of actions is, I think, what it's going to take to sort of move the needle more quickly. Um, and, I, and I know that we have amazing um, allies uh, out there who, who, who want the best for women and, and people of color. Yeah. Um, and, and to that point, I completely agree. I have had men reach out and say, you know, I could step aside or I was looking at the agenda and, um, you know, there's, there are issues there. And it, it is, everyone you know there's there's a role for everyone to play here and there are voices for everyone and i i really um I completely concur that it takes the involvement of both men and women in this um and and yes go ahead alita and, and you know something else i about that particular topic it really needs both men and women and not only in the strictly professional side of things but also at home you know why because for example if oh, there's yeah. this perception that for example being married and and, and i remember I, I have been asked in the past when i was employee interviewers like are you married and yes i was a you know late early 30 something uh married so is she going to get pregnant this and i i knew that it was because of that right you know so unfortunately it's it's um well it's something that has historically negatively affect women. And the reason is because historically it has been women and still today it's women who take care of most cases of the children. In fact, there, there has been uh, articles in, in prominent media showing how with the lockdown, uh, even if both men and women 
are working from home. The, the women are the ones taking care more of the children yeah. at the end of the day. So it has been even a backlash <laughs> to the women rather than, than the men, right? So all of this end up hurting. I am like, uh, you, many of you know, I am a, like a, an evangelist of remote work because one of the reasons is that it provides flexibility to women uh, and a much more better uh, lifestyle and, and balance of uh, personal uh, professional sides of things but the reality is that that doesn't mean anything if you don't have someone at home in many cases male allies at home with you also you know step in there to to help you to focus on your also in your on your career uh, or giving um the the appropriate support to balance uh the the work at home etc right yeah i yeah. completely agree while we've been here my husband has texted me about my son's homework and not going to door. <laughs> so I just say that I have the most supportive wife in the world. And that is one advantage I think that I have in my relationship is that we both work but we both get it like we would never yeah and, th and that's not i mean that's not across the board you know lesbian couples are just like all other couples right um but i just happen to be very fortunate in that like we we both work and we both get it and we both like lean in for one another when we when we need to but we see other relationships in that specific regard we got our claws too but in that specific regard we're like oh god that is one problem that like most the world has. Thank God we don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess that though gets to a, you know, a really deep um, issue of work-life balance and that what the detriment that that ends up putting women in financially at work and being, you know, I, there's some really great comments about imposter syndrome um, and the, you know, women culturally being trained to seek intrinsic rewards instead of extrinsic rewards. And so, um, you know, when you're, when you're feeling like I have to do all this other stuff at work, so me or at home, maybe I'm not doing what X, Y, Z is, or if I, if my, boss or whatever sees me leaving at 4 30 to go get the kids they're not seeing what i'm doing at home after the kids go to bed or i'm the first one in the office no one really notices that and you start to kind of forget <laughs> that and put a value on that um so i guess what is your advice thoughts for being able to talk to one one like recognizing that value within yourself and the the actual hours you're putting into the your work day um and whether it's extra hours or you're just more productive when you're actually doing the work um because you know you have to leave or you know that there's going to be bedtime um and then so kind of from a you know the internal value but then also how do you have those conversations and make people aware without being like you know the but I also, but I, you know, I, I am in for and, and be taken seriously with it rather than um, being seen as, you know, I, I don't know what, I don't know what the word is. I don't, and I don't know what people are actually seeing um, when they dismiss their early to work, the, you know, the side eye when you're leaving early, you know, um, but how do you address that at work? And you've seen people do it effectively. I don't even know where to begin. Like I'm a new mom. <laughs> I, there's so much in that silence there that yeah. Uh, <laughs> like I, I want to know the answer too because I'm a new mom. My husband and I we just adopted a little boy, and congratulations. Thank yeah. you. But it's a lot. It's a lot, and it and I just grew in my role at work too at the same time simultaneously, and so it's a lot. And I don't know how to balance that. I don't know how to think about that or to feel about that. And I can't imagine what it's like for other women in general, just to try to balance all of those things at one time and figure out where your real values are and are you doing your job a disservice or are you doing your child a disservice because so much of it is depending on you. Um, 
In other words, it sounds like I need to talk to my husband afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that this is a very important I issue because, for example, for me, I, I I don't have children, and I have to say that unfortunately, one of the reasons that why I don't have children is that I have been self-employed since 2014, and every time that I bring this type of conversation or even question, like the first thing that I think is like. How will I do if I am, you know, a, my own my own boss, a, a freelance business owner? It's true that I have a couple of people working with me too, but yeah, I, I still need to be there, right? So it's much, it's even it's hard for an employee. It's hard also for for business owners. It's hard for freelancers because they cannot even delegate um, the the work, right? So it's it's difficult. In my case, as a as a person, for example, I have a couple of people working. Um, um, along with me, and one of of them is is a woman, and is a mom of two of small children. And I give all flexibility in the world. In fact, she only works half half a day uh, in order to be able to take care of the kids. And and I give all the flexibility in the world that she requests when they are sick, when they need to go to school, what etc. That is like one hundred percent flexibility. And I hope and hopefully, I think it should be like this for everybody, women and men, and it shouldn't be seen as detrimental. And I think that this will also incentivize much more to men to take care of that side of things too, I have to say. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a good answer to your question though, Ginny. I mean, like it doesn't exist, right? Because what we are saying, like the core of your question was, how do you pull it off in a way that it will be well received by others? Right. And I think the answer is we're not there yet, right? There have been studies, recent studies, um, and, and I wish I had it at my fingertips, but they've shown essentially that, you know, the same behaviors when done by men or women are received by the general American public, at least differently. They're just perceived differently. Right. You know, women are the B word and men are successful and assertive. Um, and that's, that's a reality that no individual woman is going to be able to fix. Right. Right. So yes. So again, comes back to having the men involved in the conversation. I guess um, would be well. The, the women are just as guilty of that perception. Well, that and that is so true. And we were talking about that earlier. Is that um, yeah? We have work to do on ourselves with the way that we <laughs> judge each other. Um, that is that's a really good point. Um, but it makes me wonder if you know we're, we've been talking about kind of networking, um, allyship resources and you know we've been talking about it from a um you know building your career standpoint but i wonder if there is also room for um resources networking to help manage these you know talk through these conversations about work-life balance um and that there is you know, our, that that conversation gets fostered and you, we feel like we can actually talk about these challenges because we're now four women facing similar issues with um, trying to navigate all this. And yet it really doesn't get talked about that openly. I feel like, like, you know, we have our girls chats probably, um, but from a, from a professional standpoint, I'm not sure that that, dialogue gets the attention it needs. And I don't know if, um, you know, how that manifests itself, but it seems like there's a real opportunity there for um, these kinds of discussions. Um, all right, I wanted to talk about sort of some of the um, uh, things you can recommend or that you've really taken um, to heart in terms of um, advancing your own career um, and, and, and feeling like you're on a path of, um, of progress and kind of what takeaways and, and lessons can you pass on to people who are either just getting started or are feeling roadblocked? And I know that's a loaded question, but um, Amanda, why don't we start with you? Sure. Um, networking is extremely important. Um, if you are a tech SEO, join the Women Tech SEO group, like as soon as you can. <laughs> Do things like the Shine Boot Camp if you can. Um, just try to um, make connections with other women. I think that's really important. Um, Anyone who wants to, of course, can follow me on Twitter and we can become friends. 
<laughs> and Amanda T. Jordan. Um, but that's what I try to do is to make friends with other women, make friends with other people in the industry and build my own, almost like a safety net. Um, so that I have people that I can contact. I have people I can fall back on. I have men that are allies that will speak up for me. I have men that are allies that are, um, really important in just my side in my, in my like little niche of SEO that will say, Hey, you should get her to talk at your event and things like that. They're really important in the few trying to find those people would be extremely helpful for anyone who's starting out and who's new. Um, also don't be too hard on yourself. There's plenty of people who think they know everything about SEO and they do not. None of us do. <laughs> um, um, to me, the most important thing is just to be eager to learn, um, find good allies, find good mentors, join programs for people in women in digital marketing and tech SEO and in SEO in general, and try to make connections if you can. And, um, yeah, those are things that I've been trying to do a lot of recently um, and bring other people up with you. Don't keep all the secrets and the friends you made to yourself. If there's other women that you can pull up with you, you have the responsibility to do that. If you find a way, um, make that path for other women to follow. It's not just for you, make it better for everyone. Ah, uh, yes, I love that. All right, um, Alayda, I can see you shaking your head. <laughs> I, I completely agree. It was beautiful to say, Amanda. And you know what? W what is funny, right? It's like I just I started to uh, mentor other women uh, this year, also with uh, the Women in Tech SEO initiative, which is wonderful. And I understand that is going to continue to happen. And then also at the beginning of the year, I I um, I, I, I I told uh, the Brighton SEO organization that I was more than willing, for example, to, to, to give feedback to new speakers, many of them women who were like first time speakers and, and they were still insecure and they were still, you know, wondering, you know, like I am doing okay by starting to speak like this, but you know what? And, and then I, of course, it shocked me at this point to see that they were still questioning if they were valid enough to start doing this. But then I, I started to sort of reflect that if I hadn't started mentoring before, it was because I, I had also my good share of imposter syndrome myself. It's like who I am to actually mentor anybody, right? It's not like I consider myself super successful, like super winner, whatever. So, but you know, it has also taught me to understand that we are all in a position um, that we all have good good things to share, right? We are in a, in a path and in a, in a level, uh, level of our path or in our journey that there are older people who will always be uh, in different stages that we, we can definitely help. It's not that you need to be the absolute expert at something, right? So, and so it's important to control that in imposter syndrome that can definitely happen at every stage of your career. And um, I think that is, that is super important. I actually had a conversation um, a couple of weeks ago with uh, Kirsty Hall and Hannah Butcher, who are coaches who were also SEO, as SEOs at some point, right? And um, in, in the, this probably Monday episode, and I asked them about this. So they share tips uh, to control and, and, and you know, be accountable of, of your wins and, and treat yourself and talk to yourself in a nice, positive way too. Uh, that is super important and something that opened my eyes because, you know, I am like so focused at work, this, this, and that I don't stop to, Think it's like I am treating myself well. I am like speaking to myself well. I am and and always thinking whenever you are in doubt, it's like where you were five years ago, where you were ten years ago. Like even if you don't see that you're evolving, you're definitely evolving. And there's always something that you can share if you're wondering, for example, about if if, if it is if you are like experienced enough to speak, you are definitely to share your own journey what you have learned so far, right? So I think that. Bringing that confidence is critical, is fundamental, uh, and all of us can definitely even, you know, get something positive from that. Also, men mentoring other women uh, uh, as well without double thinking. If you are still at the stage where you can teach something, you, there's always something that you can definitely teach. Um, the the women in tech SEO group is fantastic. We also have like an, a, a group in the Spanish speaking community that is called Mujeres en SEO. 
uh, that started with as, as a directory many years ago, and then at some point got also its Slack group. So we are all Spanish speaker. You know of Spanish speakers, women who when uh, you know a support group. There's that too, um, and I have to say that unfortunately, in other sides of the world, Latin America, for example, less representation, less women in SEO. So, and 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 in general, we all are at a stage that need to support each other. So, I think that that is fundamental. Terrific. And how about you, Nicole? Um, so, so, I'm going to talk about it from sort of an organizational standpoint. I think, um, in going back to what you were saying, Ginny, about um, intentionality. Um, you know, you, you know, we're a very small agency and, um, you know, this year I have realized that I have to solve the problem of not formalizing a DNI initiative, right? That just because we're small doesn't mean that we, you know, don't have the time for one, can't have one. And it's enough that the, this is something that I'm passionate about. It's not enough that this is something that I'm passionate about, right? Um, so, kind of holding holding your you know holding your organizations accountable um, for uh, for sort of professionalizing the whatever your it's intentionality and professionalism those two things go together. Um, putting it out there in job descriptions. Um, I remember a few years ago I had reached out to a very big job board because I knew somebody that had, was was an executive there with a suggestion, um, and and I said I think you might be able to charge for this um, that there should be an option that you know if you're an employer and you're posting a job that you pay extra for and go ahead and anonymize all these resumes for me I don't want to see names um, I I don't want to have any of that information um, so that people can at least take that first step in your funnel. I mean, eventually you're gonna know that you're talking to a woman or that the candidate is a person of color. And then, you know, if if that's where you're at, then you've got a lot of work to do. Um, but um, but they're but they're you know taking all of those tangible steps I think is is crucial no matter what size uh, organization you are um, and you know at the at the conference level as well. There's also I have to say Harvard has an amazing project where you can take all kinds of implicit bias tests. Nobody is free from bias. This is not an attack on any individual person. Women have bias against women. You know, I, I am not a person of color, but I hazard to guess that people of color, some of them have interest because we just grow up in a predominantly male and white society. We kind of in, internalize all of these ways of thinking. Um, and so we sort of put them back out into the world the way that they are taught to us, unfortunately. So take take these tests. There are wonderful resources to kind of look in the mirror. And um, yeah, that's that's what that's I have to say. <laughs> great. Um, oh, and thank you, Greg Sterling, just put that in the uh, in the chat. Um, well, thank you so much. I do want to say we just launched today um, at Search Engine Land our first award for um, advancing diversity and inclusion in search marketing. And um, nominations are now open through October 9th. And you can or, uh, nominate as many organizations or individuals that you feel deserve the recognition. So um, if you know people, um, some might be here on this panel um, and or organizations that are really doing the work to help bring awareness and um, and push forward advancement of DNI initiatives in our industry, then um, please feel free to nominate as many of those as you like. And you can learn more about that on Search Engine Land. So thank you, Amanda, Nicole, and Aleda. Thank you for the research. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your voices. Um, and let's keep this discussion going. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much.